Okay, dokie. Hi there everyone, and welcome to Behind the Glass, Soul to Soul with Steve Gleason. Today we have one of my favorite humans, as my guest. He's the wicked lead guitarist for Pearl Jam, husband and father, an inspiration and mentor to many people, and a huge, huge, huge fan of Slayer and Creed. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike McCready. <laughs> Behind the glass, soul to soul with Steve Gleason. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I never know what you're gonna say. It's so good. There's always gonna be that some comedy that comes out that I that that that's um, perfect timing. So thank you for making me laugh and making me happy. As always, good to see you. I've been friends with Mike since 2003. When our mutual friend, Erica Perkins, introduced us at a show in Atlanta. As everyone knows, I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. So I've been a fan of Mike since 1991, when I was a freshman in high school. As a teenager, the music of Pearl Jam was the soundtrack that played in the background of nearly everything I did. 30 years later, not a lot has changed. As I said in my soul-to-soul -soul conversation with Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella, I think that Pearl Jam's record, Gigaton, released earlier in 2020, is one of the band's great albums. As a father of two kids, growing up in the heart of the 21st century, I look at our future together on planet Earth with cautious optimism and limitless possibility. And for me, the music and lyrics of Gigaton reflect the juxtaposition of potential. If you're a parent right now, the future is boundless, but there is much work to be done. For those of you in our audience who may not be real familiar with Mike, while he's been the lead guitarist for Pearl Jam for the past 30 years, he's also been very public and open about his struggle with alcohol and drugs. Just as Pearl Jam was growing to ultra fame in the early 90s, Mike was facing the pain of life and addiction. Considering how many incredibly talented musicians we have lost from that era, many of whom were close friends with Mike, it's nothing short of miraculous that Mike has successfully moved beyond this cycle. For a certified rock star, instead of being reclusive, Mike is amazingly accessible in interviews and to the public. Before the COVID pandemic, you could often find him playing benefit concerts around Seattle or regularly shredding out the national anthem at Mariners games. or Seahawks games, or at the glorious Gorge Amphitheater in the heart of Washington State. Mike and Ashley are super active in their home community of Seattle, as well as with causes that they hold dear to their hearts. Mike, as I have gotten to know you over the past 17 years, I've learned so much from your life and example. You, and Ashley, and the kids have become deeply threaded into our lives. We don't get to see each other enough, but it's well beyond simple friendship. Mike and Ashley are board members on Team Gleason. Mike, your generosity, your love, and your outright commitment to Michelle and me and our family has been incredible. I love our time together. Whether you're melting my face off with your guitar from stage right, or we're with our friends, chilling on your back deck. My friend, I'm grateful for all you have done for me, and I'm stoked that you are taking the time to have this conversation with me, brother. I love you, and I believe you're a great example for me. I think you have three questions for me, dude, and I'm ready to jam with you, my man. Yeah, um, thank you for that nice introduction. Um, uh, back at you, man. 
you're an amazing example for me and I love you and your family. And, you know, we, we, we do a lot together. And um, so my three questions for you, my friend, Steve Gleason, who I love dearly, and I'm glad to see you again. Question number one, what was the earliest or most significant time you heard music that was critical to your development as a person? When did it change from just listening to something dip, uh, deeper? When was music m deeper to you and more uh, meaningful than just listening to it? When did that start? I first heard the song Kashmir by Led Zeppelin in seventh or eighth grade with a friend who had an older brother. So they were a lot less sheltered than me from a musical standpoint. We were hanging out in their small living room, and they put the physical graffiti record on the turntable. As the compelling and mysterious intro to this song rolled through the room that afternoon, the music twisted me up. Like almost anything worthwhile or outstanding, it was simultaneously frightening, while also being completely exhilarating. It was one of the countless times that music has opened my eyes to the quote-unquote great big world out there. I know that middle school is where I first really began to explore music passionately. Simon and Garfunkel were my first favorite band. I remember staying up way too late listening to an old cassette player, trying to figure out Paul Simon's lyrics and what they meant. At this point brother, 30 years later, in large part because of the music of Pearl Jam, and more personally, because of the sound you create Mike, I'm healed by music. Simple as that. The frequency of the vibrations that you all create, match the frequency of my soul. I'm enormously grateful to you Mike. And I know there are millions of people on this planet who feel the same, my friend. I feel the same way about you, man. So I, I you know, I get, I get a lot of, um, I, I get a lot of influence from you. I get a lot of soul. I get a lot of, um, you're, you're just one of the most inspiring people I've ever met in my entire life, um, if not the most. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that our music or music in general can be that way, you know, for you. Um, uh, it, it, know that uh, our friendship is the same way for me. I get that same kind of feeling from just knowing you as an individual and the work that you do with ALS and how you help people makes my life better. So, um, so my second question, it says, in what ways are a band and a football team the same? This is a great question, Mike. Are you trying to tell the millions and millions and millions and millions of people who will watch our conversation that you could have played football, Mike, if you didn't have this divine musician thing going on? I would have played tennis. I'm not a football guy. I mean, I love football, but I play all tennis. That's what I would have wanted to do. So. It's okay, dude. Just say it. Russell Wilson got nothing on you. <laughs> Russell Wilson has a whole bunch on me. I love Russell Wilson. <laughs> In all seriousness though, brother, I think the similarities between a football team and a band are too many to list. It's crazy, Mike. Especially after I've known you, I've seen the similarities more and more. While we don't have time to talk about all the similarities, I do think that there are two valuable characteristics that great bands and great teams share. And without these characteristics, it seems impossible for any organization to be great for long. First off, I think that the mission has to be for the group rather than the individual. The greatest teams and the greatest bands are able to transcend and move beyond the ego and at least for the most part, have humility, and surrender individual accolades, in exchange for the success of the group. Secondly, I think a similarity that great bands and great teams share is, the leaders, the leaders have the ability to lead in the huddle, or on stage, but both publicly, and behind the scenes, great leaders have the ability, to acknowledge that, 
They could not do what they do, or be who they are, without the rest of the organization. When I was invited to interview you and the rest of Pearl Jam in 2013, I asked you all about this topic of what makes a band great. You guys were all united in what was best for the band, while surrendering the individual ego's need to be separate and superior. I know I'm not the only fan that has said thank you all, Ed, Stone and Matt, Jeff, and yourself Mike. Thank you for surrendering individual desires to make some absolutely life-altering music that has empowered and unbound millions of souls. Thank you, Steve. That's very beautiful and intense. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I look at, I, it, when you were talking, I was thinking about times right before we're going on stage and Ed will have his list and it's kind of like this is the plays that we're going to do right before we go on and uh, maybe here you do this song you know so he's he's very you know focused on leading this with our input but we follow his lead you know on, on before we go on stage and, and i'm thinking about him kind of it's almost like he's running plays um in terms of how the set list is um and uh we huddle before the shows and so there's, you know, there's, there's elements of that, uh, for sure, of camaraderie and, and, and for the greater good. Um, and, you know, surrendering egos is not easy to do, you know, especially if you're you know, rock stars or football stars or whatever it is. But that's, that's, where the, that's where the truth lies. And that's where the, um, when you can do that, we can find some humility and make music for, for a, a bigger purpose, you know. Um, so on uh, the third question is what is the most important and relevant part of helping others with ALS well we are living that example brother interviews and conversations like this Mike the idea that even in the face of incredibly difficult circumstances that a person choosing to live with ALS can do something like interview fucking Mike McCready means that truly anything is possible. I know that when I was first diagnosed, I was searching and scratching for anything and anyone who I could look to break the idea that I was facing a death sentence and I was going to just fade away quietly. So I'm just paying that forward. What is ironic about this question, Mike, is I believe that you provide similar inspiration for anyone who has acknowledged that they are an alcoholic or addicted to drugs. You might not know that, but I've heard it from a lot of people. While I think that inspiration, no matter who or what it comes from, can be great, inspiration is not really helpful if there are no steps to take so that other people choosing to live with ALS can put in the same effort. You, Mike McCready, are a sponsor for the 12-step program and the salvation it provides for alcoholics or anyone addicted to their thoughts or beliefs. That is also the entire mission and purpose of our foundation. Team Gleason provides the equipment, technology, and the philosophies to live with ALS, so if you're watching this and you've been diagnosed with ALS, or if you're watching and you know someone who has been diagnosed with ALS, contact our foundation. We have a passionate and committed staff at Team Gleason who work tirelessly to help everyone who is in need. Great questions, my friend. Are you okay to keep jamming a little more, Mike? I've got a handful of questions for you, brother. I have a handful of answers. I hope. Thanks again, brother, for having this conversation with me. We call this program Soul to Soul for a reason. I enjoy exploring the truth beyond what we are taught in buildings. So I'm going to dive right in the deep end. Mike, in your truth. Where's your old school grunge Stevie Ray Vaughan hat, dude? 
<laughs> it's uh, long gone. Uh, it's my, my old Steve Ray Vaughan hat is is gone somewhere, lost in the in the rainy mist of the '90s. Um, so I don't know where it is, um, and it's probably better that it is gone because he wore those things better than I did. So <laughs> I did love me some Stevie though, and uh, and your show is called Soul to Soul. So you know, that was one of his songs, and um, he Steve Ray Vaughan is one of my favorite guitar players. If not, you know, there's Hendrix and him and those two changed my life. So Stevie seeing him, I got to see him four times luckily. And, um, it was, uh, it was through him. It made me understand Hendrix a little bit better. Um, but it was also like, Oh yeah, you can play with, there's someone that can play with that much, that soul. Um, and, uh, transform, people's lives because of because of his feeling is what I loved about Stevie and still do to this day. And plus, you know, on even flow, I'm trying to do some of his licks and all sorts of stuff. You know, a lot of that, when I try to get funky or whatever, if that's the right term, and um, it sounds so silly when I say it, but um, I try to go down, you know, I, I think about him, you know, kind of like, so it's like. Amazing man. That is so important. Even if he wore such a nasty hat, you're a complex man, Mike. <laughs> One example of this is your shift in persona and your shift in energy, or pneuma, between on stage and off stage. I've had the privilege of knowing you off stage, and you couldn't be a more humble, appreciative, or soft spoken soul. But on stage, you're a full-blown fucking blowtorch rock god of thunder who will incinerate anything that happens to cross your path throughout the show. I've been told by several of our mutual friends, including Matt Shaw, that we share this ability to flip the switch. My question is, is this something you've ever consciously thought about, or is it just something that organically happens when you step on stage? Um, yeah, wow. Um, so a shout out to Matt Shaw and to Tears of Shaw. Um, I love both of them. Got to meet some really great people, uh, new friends from, from knowing you from all these, uh, all these years. Um, and, and they are certainly wonderful. Um, in terms of, yeah, I mean, we've been in different situations together. We were freaking uh, in Halloween and, uh, you were Hannibal Lecter and I was Alice Cooper and we went down to Frenchman Street and, you know, we, and, and or come over for um, crawfish and uh, at your house and you know our families have hung out together and done stuff and I've been down there for run Crohn's runs and we've had great dinners that you know with Michelle's dad and all sorts of stuff you've been very I feel like I'm part of your family and and that makes me and, and my family is is part of that too your family and and that makes me you know humble and, and grateful and uh that's that's the important stuff in life, you know, um, and music as is music. And um, on stage, if I'm playing to the best of my ability, I'm not thinking about it. You know, I'm hopefully channeling something from somewhere else, um, which is what I believe happens. Um, and that's kind of when you know I'm kind of doing this, and I can see the guitar neck. You know, in my mind's eye, I guess is what it is, and I'm not. I'm just feeling, I'm purely feeling the music. And that's when the band is, is it happens with these guys, with me. It happens, you know, I, it happens with other people too, but, but, but never as much or as, as, as deep as with uh, my, the guys in Pearl Jam. And, um, and it, it came from years of playing, you know, it's a lot of, you know, thousands of shows and, and um, getting to intuitively know where, where the next, um, where, the, where, where we're going to go when we're jamming and we're not really, you know, we're, we're communicating, we're communicating, but through music with each other and the crowd. Um, and I, I just go to somewhere, you know, and I, 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 I drag from the, I, I take pain, the pain that I felt through Crohn's or addictions or, you know, all that stuff over the years or people loss of people. And I put that into my playing, you know? So I think I take the, the pain of, of, of life at times and I put it into my playing um, and that, and I feel that that's that's what it comes out when it comes out the best 
um, is when I'm feeling it and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm exercising it somehow, um, whatever demons or, or, or trying to reach a spiritual high, you know? Um, and that only happens when I'm, it only happens when I, when it wants to, it's not when I, I can't force it, you know, I can't go, now I'm going to be spiritually here and I'm playing my lead. And, you know, I, it, 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 if I want something like that to happen, it doesn't, it has to happen when the band's firing on all cylinders and the crowd's in there and we're, we're playing whatever. It could be any one of our songs, you know, it happens in porch. Sometimes it, it's, it's when I'm connected with everyone in the room and the universe. And, and it's, uh, that's when I'm playing my best, you know, and I feel like I'm, I'm on fire or whatever. And just, just playing from pure soul, hopefully. Um, and not intellect. Uh, so that's, you know, and then I, I, I turn into this other guy when I'm on stage, I just kind of went, I'm, you know, and, and I don't know how that happens other than it happened from years of doing it with those guys, you know, and I've, I mean, I've played in bands since I was 11 and a half years old, you know, or 12. And um, I played our first show in 1979 with my band Warrior, you know, so I've been playing, I've been doing this a long time, you know, and uh, it was a birthday party. <laughs> At any rate, so it, I, I, it's part of my life and it's in my DNA, I think, you know, to, to do that, to play guitar. And, um, but when it's at its best, it's full of soul and it's not thought about, if that makes sense. Right. A real connection with the entire universe. That's exactly what I'm talking about. With your generosity of spirit with other people. This is awesome, man. Thank you. Okay. So here we go, Pearl Jam fans. Mike, which song, or part of a song, from the Gigaton record, makes you feel that switch flip to Invincible Mike, shredding the crowd's faces off, or maybe one of your epic and ethereal riffs that take my soul to another dimension? And one more teeny tiny request. Will you play it for us right now? Yes, uh, well, so... Off of the new record, off of the Gigaton record, you know, there's there's a lead on Quick Escape that I feel like I really kind of went off in that direction, um, and I can't play that right now because it's <laughs> it's it's so I haven't really rehearsed it, and we were rehearsing and we would I got all sorts of excuses, but um, that 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 one I feel is very indicative of 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 me kind of losing my you know feeling. It, pure thought and fire and expression came out on that lead. But also, you know, at the end of this, um, on the song Retrograde, um, that, that I wanted that ending to be huge and big and people to listen to it on headphones and to go somewhere and to travel in your mind wherever you wanted to go. Um, but I wanted it to be very explosive and, and have a huge ending um, and, and I feel like it has, that, that's an example of it too, maybe in, in terms of songwriting, because the demo, I, I made it that way. And I knew when Ed got on it and Matt came and then our Josh Evans helped us with some effects and stone and everybody put their stuff on it. Um, it would be, it would turn into something bigger as what, what happens with Pearl Jam. And so the ending of Retrograde is kind of that, but I can play the riff for Retrograde itself right now. Um, and then, but I got to hang on, clearly not ready, but um, can I play you something else too? that I've written, that I'm gonna write for you right now. Okay, here we go.
baby. This is wonderful. I love retrograde. It's just a huge, huge, huge sound. It takes me to my happy place. And your freestyle improv is a gift to me. Thanks, Mike. I've learned a lot about the 12 steps over the past several years. During my journey with ALS, I know implementing the concepts of acceptance, surrender, powerlessness, and forgiveness have really liberated me to move beyond the ego, and my addiction, to thinking rigidly. These concepts allow me to create more powerfully, from a place of love, rather than separation or resistance. The 12-step program is wonderfully spiritual, in its reliance on God, as a person understands God, or the higher power, to be and moving beyond addiction. Mike, here's my question. In what ways has the 12-step program helped your evolution spiritually? And what are some rituals that you practice to stay on frequency and continue to deal with and embrace the adversity of life on a daily basis, a moment-to-moment -moment basis? Um, great question. Um, certainly the 12-step program that I'm part of has saved my life, you know, and uh, I wouldn't be here today to talk to you had I not gotten uh, luckily into one. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, for me, it's, you know, it's the, it's the concept of something bigger than, than me, you know, there's, you know, and people, people use the word God and it's a, that, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded word and, and sometimes it turns people off and sometimes, you know, it, it's everyone's own conception of what that is, you know, in terms of, I look at it as more of a spiritual program in terms of, uh, you know, looking at something that's bigger than myself, like nature or a group of people talking about issues, you know, that, you know, if, if I'm trying to, a great analogy is like, if I'm trying to hold, can I hold the ocean back, you know? That I can't do that. That o the ocean is bigger than I am, and and so I have to put I put you know a, my spirit into the ocean would be my solution to things. I don't know if that makes sense, um, but it's a the twelve step thing has saved my life, and um, it's a spiritual program. There's like you said, the, the uh, terms of acceptance, how to deal with resentments, fears, anxiety. Um, you know, certainly first of all, uh, alcohol and addictions, um, uh, but it's a day-to-day -day thing. I've got to work on it every day. And um, I'm really lucky I got to be part of it, you know, because a lot of guys that wanted it here in Seattle or didn't want it, didn't get it and, and, and have died. And uh, as we, you have kind of alluded to our earlier, you know, friends of mine. And so it just makes me sad um, that they, they couldn't have got this and how great life is, you know, now. 
Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. It's something I have to do every day. I've got, I wake up and I meditate. You know, I, I, I work with others. You know, I, 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 I try to figure out how they do it. You know, and that's, you have to give, your, give of yourself a little bit to, uh, and, and, and in turn, I get a bunch back, you know, in terms of uh, spiritual need um, that fills the void that might have been there before um, with, with addiction and, and alcoholism and is still there, you know. I don't necessarily want to drink or do drugs or anything like that now, um, but I still get, you know, fears and anxieties and, and stuff that, that would make me, how I used to deal with life was go to those things, was go to, to alcohol or pills or whatever. Um, but that's not really dealing with life, you know, that's just hiding from it. And, and, and they, they, they say life on life's terms. And um, every day for me, that's a new, I have to re redefine that every day. I've got to, my rituals are, you know, I hit the singing bell and I just meditate or whatever. Um, and I, or, or um, you know, I play guitar or I pray to something or, you know, I, I just try to get out of myself um, and working with others, trying to be of service, I guess, is, is another. And, and that, that also, that, that also uh, transfers over into um, uh, working with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation or, you know, doing esteemable acts or doing things and, you know, not necessarily talking about them, you know, trying to, trying to do, be a good human being um, uh, at the, to the best of my ability every day. But yeah, again, the 12 step programs have saved my life and I, I owe everything to them. So um, I don't, that's, I have everything today because of it. And um, I, I'm very grateful. Um, it's there, there, there's a lot to them, but there's also not. It's just like, it's, it's, it's just kind of following a path that's a good orderly direction is what I've said before in the past. And, you know, I've followed many bad, bad orderly directions early in the nineties and they took me down some very dark paths. And um, luckily I got out of that, you know, and I was one of the lucky ones. I have to put it that way, you know, and, but I work very hard at it. It's very important to me to stay sober, you know, and to not, do drugs and things like that. So it's important to me to, to keep living life on life's terms. Do I like it like that all the time? No, but I, I, I've had it better than, you know, I have it better than I ever had when I was drinking or doing drugs, for sure. I mean, I can create music now. I'm a father, I'm a husband. Um, we can talk, you know, I get to have real friendships. I get to have um, real experiences um, that, you know, it's something as simple as a sunrise or a sunset, you know, means so much more to me now than it did when I was thinking I had to go get high to go look at something like that, you know. Now it's now it's so much more of a wonder, you know. But uh, yeah, hopefully that answers it. It's you know, it's it's everything to me. It's sure. an ongoing process, seeing the unity of everything, every moment. This is awesome, and I believe people will really get something from you and your life and example. I, I hope, you know, as from you, you know, and that's the point. Mike, you've experienced a lot of victory in your life. You've had a wildly successful career as an artist, which I would call external success. Brother Mike, you've also recovered successfully from addiction, and you continue to embrace your circumstance with Crohn's disease. I'm curious, as something of a soul-to-soul -soul question, how would you define success, and what has it looked like in your own life? Are there areas in your life, Mike, where you intend to become more successful? Yeah, um, you know, I, I define, that's a great question, Steve. I define success now as, you know, getting through the day, being the best father and husband and not having to apologize to anybody at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, if, if, I've, if I've, you know, lived a, a good day um, and been productive um, and been helpful uh, to my family or friends or to anybody, and uh, then I, I define that as success, you know, and um, I wouldn't have thought that before, you know, years ago, I would have thought success is, 
is there is a completely different thing. And, you know, yes, I have achieved more than I've ever imagined. And I'm grateful for that in terms of our band, you know, selling millions of records and us being able to, you know, communicate and play music for people that, that, that means uh, something to them from, um, and that, that means a lot to me too. That's, that's a huge success. And that's something that in terms of musical success, that can only happen when you're true to your own. I feel if you're writing, you can't second guess what you're writing for. You can't go, I think people would like this, you know, I think you have to write internally first, put it into the band, and then that turns into something. And then, then people either gravitate towards that something that it's turned into or they don't. And luckily for our situation, you know, people have, and we have a lot of, you know, a bunch of songwriters in our band and a great singer. And, you know, we're, that's, I, I, very, I feel very, very blessed for that type of success. Um, in terms of day-to-day -day success, you know, it's, it's gonna be, again, just can, how can I be the best human I can be? Can I get through the day and not have to apologize to anybody at the end of the day? It's just like, that's my latest one I've been thinking about. And, you know, and that including family members and friends and, and, and whatever. Um, I just wanna be the best human being I can be. I wanna, I wanna, you know, fight for the underdog and help people, you know? It's like, that's, there's nothing more valuable, I think, than, you know, helping people or, or, or making somebody feel better, you know? Um, and whatever that is, whatever anybody does to do that is, 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 is valuable and successful, I think. Um, so that's, you know, being a, being a good human being. I feel like that's, that's, that's being successful and not, you know, not being judgmental or alien, alienating people or racist or, or being, you know, a, a bad person. None of that, you know, going, trying to, you know, be the best measure of a man that I can be in today's society and work for solutions, work for solutions in society and, and, and um, not the opposite, you know, we want solutions, spiritual and physical and mental and all that. Working for that is success, I think. That is great, man. That leads me right into my next question. Let's go soul to soul on current events, in the world, and in our country. Mike, a theme that runs through the 12-step program is outward service to others. You and Ashley, and the family, are so dedicated to serving and helping other people. What is you and your family's connection to the Seattle community? And what do you feel is your responsibility during this current moment with the movement for black equality? Uh, good question. Great, great question, Steve. Um, in terms of Ashley and, and my, my, and my family and our involvement in Seattle, you know, we're involved in a lot of different causes and uh, want to give back to organizations, whether it's Crohn's and Clyde's Foundation, Treehouse, which is, for uh, foster kids, um, you know, there's a lot of different organizations. Um, and, you know, in terms of the Black Lives Matter, um, we, uh, when, you know, pr when Michael Bennett was, was kneeling, um, you know, a, a few years ago, I, I went and did the, the anthem and I put his number on the back of my guitar and held it up. And because I support people protesting, because that's part of what America is. And um, I'm, I'm a white guy from Laurelhurst and that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely grew up with privilege and I, I'm not pretending to say that I understand what, what the black community has gone through. Um, but I want to understand. Um, and I want, I want my kids to understand. And clearly there's been 400 years of systematic racism and, you know, laws passed to keep people down, to keep us, um, African American people down, and um, and it's shown itself in all sorts of different ways, and now it's just come to a head. So, I wanting to be part of that and wanting to expose my kids to the injustice injustices of of things that have happened in America and are continuing to, um, and I want to be part of the solution, and I want to be on the right side of history, and I feel like 
supporting that Black Lives Matter is that. And um, so we've been to a few, we've been to a couple rallies, you know, and we've, we uh, went to a couple marches here and I'm very proud of our city um, for, for being, uh, for embracing that. Um, you don't, it, it's kind of like, it's, it's seeing the act of people taking, taking their own time from their, from their jobs or whatever to go and protest it because they believe in something that's bigger than themselves. And going up against a system or a government that doesn't care about that at all, that will just wants to send armed people to come and hurt protesters. That's like, that's insane to me. So I feel like, you know, we need, our, our leadership has totally failed us you know, and it continues to over and over and over again. Um, and I look for, I look forward to, you know, someday having leadership with vision and intelligence and caring and reaching out to other people. Um, and uh, ho hopefully, you know, someday that'll happen, but there's a lot of work that needs to be there, need to be, needs to be done uh, before that happens. So in that, in saying all that, you know, I, I, I want to be part of, the solution of things. And I feel like being part of the Black Lives Matter protests uh, has, has been very important to me and um, and will continue to be in my family, so. Right. Peaceful dissent is a primary driver of why our country is such a wonderful example to humanity. Yeah. And that we're that we can do that, you know. And we have to keep fighting for that right, or that'll that'll be gone, you know. Peacefully gathering, you know. Gratitude is a big theme for you, my man. You talk about it with me a lot, and I know you mentioned gratitude in our 2013 interview with the rest of Pearl Jam. The world is in a rough patch here in 2020. Not a lot of people are expressing gratitude, while we seem to have criticizing of other people down to a science. What are you grateful for personally, Mike? And what do you see in the world that we can all be grateful for in this current time? Good, great question, man. Yeah, since we've talked about that last time, it's certainly gotten a lot more contentious and divisive and insane and you know it's um i'm grateful for younger generations now that are you know that are are thinking in terms of, of the bigger picture in terms of transgender rights to in terms of um rights for all races in terms of you know changing hopefully changing the system for the better you know and I know that's all kind of utopian thought and, and, but it's, 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 it's the way it should be. I mean, that's just, and I am, I feel like my generation hasn't done that. And um, we've tried, I think to a point, but if, you know, I have hope that young, the younger generation that are, that are coming up behind us now will, will make this place of, you know, a better place. And I feel like it will, I think, I think the world, will get better. It's going to take a long time. Uh, Martin Luther King has this, uh, uh, um, I'm going to paraphrase him. He has a, a, f a phrase that says, um, the moral universe, uh, the, the, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And I always have to go back to that because as much as I get dissuaded by the, you know, the news events or the horrible leadership or, you know, whatever it is, if I start going down the path of negativity, I have to look over the arc of history and the arc of moral history from that Martin Luther and to see that it does bend towards justice, you know, and maybe we're seeing some of that happening with the marches and, 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 and getting to people to start talking about systematic racism and, and how it's built into our, into our laws, into our systems. And, um, I was never aware of any of that growing up. And, and now I think the new generations are, and that's, that's important. Education and all that stuff is super important. And um, we, I have hope for that. And I, you know, I'm grateful for a myriad of things, you know, clearly for 
being sober for I'm grateful for nature. I'm grateful for, you know, water, sun or the earth, you know, I, I'm grateful for my family and, you know, music and, and uh, my good friends and um, the simple things, the small things in life, you know, I'm grateful for that stuff. And uh, that's the, it's a practice to stay with, within gratitude. And to do that is to, you know, to meditate for me, to, you know, to be of service to others, to get out of my own ego. And then I can stay in gratefulness, you know, stay in humility and gratefulness and life is better. Do I always think that? No, I mean, but I have to work at it and I want to work at it, you know? Well said. Well said. I'm a dreamer. I'm, a dreamer, but I'm, not, but I'm the only not the one. only one. <laughs> Love it. John Lennon. Love it. So I'm grateful for you, Mike McCready. And I'm grateful for your life. And I'm grateful for the music of Pearl Jam. Keep it up, Mike. Thanks so much for sharing your time with us today on Behind the Glass, Soul to Soul with Steve Gleason. I love you, my friend. Thanks for all you do for me and all you do for our world. Have a great day, my friend. Thank you, Steve. I love you back, man. You know it. Um, you are a true inspiration to me. You're probably the strongest guy I've ever met in my life in terms of your vision and your of, of your uh, wanting to help people and how you do it and how you never stop. And um, I, I, you're a great influence on me. And I will continue to play music because I love doing it. But also, you influence me to do that too. So hopefully, you know that. You know, you you do the same thing for me as as I think our my music does for you, um, spiritually and emotionally. And plus, you always say something funny that I never see coming, and <laughs> it happens sometimes when you introduce maybe inside job at certain shows and things like that, or the beginning of this interview. But all right, love you, man.